Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about SEO with React. So SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization, and it's essentially focused on doing things, uh, optimizations, so your app or site is going to rank high in Google. However, that can usually be done in two ways, right? You can, for example, pay for uh, Google Ads, so that is the advertisement platform of Google, and then you can, by you know, paying money, uh, essentially rank high in, in Google. But there is also SEO, which is more focused on organically trying to rank high in Google. And, and it, in essence, you could do that completely for free. But, you know, SEO is quite complicated, right? There's over, I think, 200 metrics that Google is using to determine like a score for your for your site. So in this video, we will be uh, really focusing on more the technical aspect of it, you know, with relation uh, or in relation to React. So for a lot of people, the concerns with React are is that they are not sure if Google can actually crawl a uh, page in your single page application. And I can tell you straight away that uh, Google is actually able to crawl data from your uh, page and if you don't know what crawling is uh, Google kind of like has these scripts uh, that you know retrieve information from your site which they then use in the Google search engine um, and uh, but because react apps are different of course because we're using pretty much a lot of JavaScript it's not like your typical website where you have only like HTML files that are uh, being served to the client so but you know google can do that so that's uh, that's great now the other question a lot of people have is whether you can set meta tags and the answer is yes here you can see an example so what we can do with meta tags is that we can um, control how pages will be shown in the google search engine so let's say the title and the description for every search result we can set that uh, and we can also do that for for react apps so we are going to use the React Helmet Async for that. It's a library. But before we get into uh, uh, working with that library, let's actually start creating a very simple uh, app that has some routing in it, okay? So I will go to the app.tsx file. And what I will do, I will actually start by installing React Router DOM. So I will say npm install React router DOM. And since we're using TypeScript, I also want the add types slash React router DOM. So I'll get back to you once that's installed. Cool. So now that's installed, I will just import some uh, functions from React router DOM. So I will say import from React router DOM. And then I want to have browser router as router. And I want to have route. Okay. And then right here, I will have my router. And let's say we have two routes. So we have one route. And it says exact path is login. And that will render the component login it's not there yet but we will um we will import it or actually it would be like this login and we'll have a shop page so this will be shop so i will just quickly um make those two components i'll just put them right here in a folder called pages and i'll say login dot tsx login and we want to have another page and uh, let's take a look shop that was it shop so I'll save that as well and i will import both of these components okay there we go so now when i go to my app you will see that in the root we don't have anything but when i go to login you'll see login and when i go to shop you'll see shop okay cool that's working 
So now I'd like to ask you to install the Meta SEO extension for Chrome. There, there are a couple, couple of ones out there that are quite similar. Uh, I have this one right here. It's called Meta SEO Inspector. You can just find it by saying as uh, Meta SEO Inspector. And it's this Chrome extension right here. So once you've got that installed, if you then go to the uh, back to your React app and you go to your plugins, uh, you will see that right now this uh, is, is kind of like catching some metadata that's on our page. And you will say that the title of the page is React app and the description is says website created using create react app and this is coming from the index.html file so as you can see right here um, here we have a meta tag that actually has that description in there and right down below here you'll see it also has that title tag and you will see that this is the same for the login page right it's the exact same meta it has the like the exact same meta title and uh, and description and you can imagine that this is not optimal if we want to have our site indexed in google because that will mean that this description and title is used for every page right so for i'll just do a random search but that would mean that if we um are like in google and like every page in our site is going to show um React app and right here that description that said, uh, what did it say? Uh, website created using create React app. So that's why we're now going to uh, actually change the meta tags for the individual pages. And we're going to use uh, React Helm async for that, like I said before. So I'll just install that and get back to you uh, once it is uh, installed. All right, so it's installed right now and I will go to the uh, index.esx file and I will uh, create a helmet provider and wrap my app component in there. Okay. So I will go here and it will say helmet provider. And we are going to import that helmet provider from uh, React helmet async there we go the next thing we want to do is to add data dash r h is true to the index.html file uh, to the meta tag so we'll go to the index.html file and right here where we have the meta tag uh, with the name description i will add that data dash r h equals to true and I'll save that as well. And now we can configure a helmet component on each individual page. So let's say I go to the shop page right here. I can now, instead of just returning shop, I'll actually say, I will wrap it in a P tag, by the way, called shop. And now I can import helmet. And I will also import that from react helmet async so we'll have helmet from react helmet async there we go and what the helm components allows us to do is to set the um you know a specific set of header properties so what i can say right here i could say that i want to have the title set to shop and I can add a meta tag uh, and let's say it's name. So we're going to do the description. Uh, so the name is description and the content is, let's say uh, shop our latest products now. Latest, there we go. Okay. So now when I save this and I go back to the React app and I will navigate to shop, you will see that when I go to Meta SEO Inspector, it now says that the title of the page 
is uh, shop and the description says shop our latest products now. And if I go back to a login, you will see because we didn't set a helmet for that component, it is now using that default uh, meta tag that is in our, that lives in our index.html file. So now we've been able to customize it. Now I think it's always a good practice to also set, uh, you, you can see the um, extension is already saying it, is that a uh, canonical URL is missing. So in order to prevent that, you can say link and the relation will be canonical and the href will simply be the route of your page. So this will be shop. So now I'm gonna save it and I go back to the shop page. And now you can see that error um, has cleared up. And now you see it says local host, but when we would push this app to production, it will actually uh, use your, uh, your domain. So now we have this working. Uh, the next thing I'd like to get into is the robots.txt file. And this is actually provided by default with create react app. You can see right here, we have the robots.txt file, which lives in your public folder. And in your robots.txt file, you are able to tell crawlers like the Google crawlers to not crawl your page. Um, so currently because this allow is, you could say empty, Google will crawl all your pages, but you can also say slash, and that will mean that you will disallow all pages to not be crawled. Okay. So let's say we have an app and we don't want the login page to be crawled. We can simply say there's a lot login. And maybe if we have some other page, maybe like uh, like a secret page, you can say like slash secret, right? So this is um, what you can do in the robots.txt file. Uh, I will remove it because I want Google to actually crawl uh, all the pages on my site. Now it's good to know that um, not allowing Google to crawl your site is not a guarantee that it will not show up in the search results. Uh, if you want to prevent that, you can use a meta tag uh, with the no index uh, property. So what you could do, let's say we want the uh, shop page not to be indexed, you can add another meta tag and that will then have, as you can see right here, name, robots, content, no index. But like I said before, I want actually my pages to be both crawled and indexed in the Google search results. So I'll leave that out for now. So let's hop on to the next part. And that's actually allowing Google to crawl our sitemap.txt file, which is currently not um, existing yet. And in order to do this, I first need to deploy my site. And before I do that, um, I'd like to let you know that we actually forget it to also add the helmet component on the login page. So let's do that first. So I can just copy and paste this, I'll say login right here. And then we also have to import helmet right there. And now of course I need to change this. So this will be, have a title called login. HYF will be login as well. And then right here, login to, I don't know, view your account, something like that. Cool, so I will save that. And yeah, to get back to uh, the deployment, if you want to know how to do that, you can check out my video on deployment. It's called Deployment CICD. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do that right now and see you in a minute. Awesome. So the site has been deployed. You can see it right here. And when I can navigate to shop, it should show the shop page. Awesome. So that's working. Uh, the next thing we want to do is to create a sitemap.txt file in the public folder. So I'll just go right here in the public folder and create that file. So that will be sitemap.txt. And in here, we are simply going to pass the uh, the URLs that uh, our site kind of like contains. Okay, so we have the 
first of all, we have like the root. Okay. Then we have the login page and then we have the shop page. Now you can imagine as your application starts to grow, uh, this might become quite burdensome to maintain. And, uh, there are tools out there that allow you to automatically generate a sitemap based on your, uh, your router. But, uh, I have to say most of those libraries are not very well maintained and it, they also don't have like, uh, like a lot of downloads. Uh, so you should be careful about that. But on the other hand, if your app, you know, if, if SEO is a concern for your app and it grows to the size where, you know, maintaining a sitemap dot text file becomes burdensome, you might want to look into tools like uh, Next.js, for example. Okay. Next.js, uh, is, is, is great, especially for, for those kind of purposes. And I think, um, that your app probably would then benefit from using Next.js. So if you don't know or haven't heard about Next.js before, we are using a tool chain uh, called Create React App. And there's other tool chains out there, uh, including like Gatsby and Next.js and some others. And Next.js is, is well, it's, it's like, a, like a super hybrid. You can do like server-side rendering, static-side generation, client-side rendering. So Client sent rendering is actually what we're doing with Create React App. Um, so you can do a lot with Next.js. Uh, so, you know, if your app grows to, you know, that kind of size, you might want to consider using Next.js instead of Create React App. Um, by the way, I might, you know, I'm thinking about maybe releasing a Next.js course. So let me know if you'd like to uh, see me making one. Um, but enough about Next.js. Um, we have our sitemap file. So now we can go to the Google search console and add a meta tag that, uh, that will be given by, uh, by Google. So I'll just go there. And now you can see that we can add either a domain or a URL. I will just pass in my URL right here. The one I got from Netlify. And now it's going to do a verification and you can either download an HTML file uh, or HTML tag. Well, I think the tag is a easy solution. So I will copy that tag and I will go to the index.html file. And let's take a look and we can just put it, let's say down below here. Okay. So this is our tag we got from Google. I will save it. And then now we'll push these changes. So I will cause Netlify to build my site again and get back to you once that's done. All right. So the site has been redeployed and I will click on verify and this will verify. And now you'll see that, uh, we, we got this property. So now when I click right here, you'll get to the dashboard itself. You can see the, um, site is now like my personal property, so to speak. And what we can do is we can now add the sitemap. And what might be interesting to take a look at is now if I copy the URL of my site and say slash sitemap.txt, you will see that we actually get that file we created. And this is also what we're going to send to Google. So right here, Google asked me to um, give the URL of the sitemap. So that will just be sitemap.txt. I will send it and now you will see Google was able to find the sitemap and found through a URL. So it might take a, a bit of time before uh, this actually uh, uh, will show up in the Google search results. Um, if you go right here above sitemaps, I think it will say coverage in English. It will give you some uh, details about the pages that have been crawled. And you can also track, for example, uh, uh, like the, uh, the SEO ranking of the individual pages and so on. So, uh, there's a lot to explore. Of course, there's a lot more to SEO, but I think, um, like from a technical perspective, this is a way you can, um, you can make it work with, uh, with create react app. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.